So a lot of chapter 18 in your text has to do with weak acids and weak bases, and specifically the titration of them, how we can glean information from the titration of a weak acid and weak base. Uh, this case, we are titrating a weak acid with a strong base. So at the very beginning, we know that we have the burette and the Erlenmeyer flask, and um, we haven't added at this point any um, sodium hydroxide, and we only have um, this weak acid, which I'm naming HA in the Erlenmeyer flasks in the Erlenmeyer flask. So at the very beginning, here's the dissociation that we're looking at. I have um, a weak acid with water, and it's dissociating antihydronium, and to the conjugate base, A minus. We don't know the Ka, so the purpose of this titration that we're focusing on right here is to find the Ka of the weak acid. Okay, so moving on from here, Let's say I have added one milliliter of uh, my, my strong base. So I've added one milliliter from the burette. It's gone down into the Erlenmeyer, and it's reacted with the um, weak acid. So I give the molarity of my sodium hydroxide, and I give the molarity of my weak acid. And at this point, the hydroxide is reacting or has reacted with the weak acid. So notice at this point, dissociation due to water is negligible compared to dissociation due to sodium hydroxide because hydroxide is a much stronger base than water. Therefore, it's going to dissociate um, the weak acid, but the water isn't going to cause much dissociation of the weak acid. So this is really the uh, reaction of focus. Um, we have a weak acid plus the hydroxide the weak acid dissociates into A minus, its conjugate base, and water. And um, let's pull this up a little bit. So what I always want to do when I'm looking at a titration is to calculate the moles of both the acid and the base I have at the very beginning. And then as I'm and then as I'm adding um, my base, I want to calculate how many moles of base I have added to the Erlenmeyer flask. So, so really the focus is the Erlenmeyer flask, what's happening in the Erlenmeyer. Okay, so I'm solving for the moles of my um, weak acid right here. I end up having 2.550 times 10 to the negative 3. I got that from using the molarity and the volume of the weak acid in the Erlenmeyer. And then here, notice I'm calculating the moles of hydroxide that were added. So I'll just make a little note right here. These are always what have been added. You're not really concerned about how much hydroxide or how much of the material that was in the burette that you had at the beginning. You're really just asking how much you've added in the process. Okay, so the first thing is to, is to solve for moles of each reactant. And the second thing, um, regardless of, of what the overall... Um, what the overall goal of the titration is, you always want to make sure you know how many moles of each reactant you have at a particular time. And the second is to set up an ice table. So the, an ice table is used for the reaction of focus. So in this case, although the weak acid is dissociating with water at the same time, what I'm focusing on is its dissociation due to the addition of hydroxide. I want to make a quick note here. I didn't put sodium hydroxide, I just put hydroxide. Because remember, the conjugate acid of a strong base is a neutral cation, meaning it's not going to affect the pH of the solution. And so sodium is really just the counter ion to hydroxide. It is a spectator ion. It is not responsible for the reaction of focus. Okay, so I set up my initial change in equilibrium. Uh, moles. So what I'm plugging into this table right here, I'll make a note of that. Right here, I'm plugging in moles. Okay, so you could also plug in molarity, but it gets a little bit more complicated because remember the volume of the solution in the Erlenmeyer flask is changing because you're adding solution from the burette into the Erlenmeyer flask. Okay, so I've calculated the moles of my weak acid and strong base from up above right here. 
Water, of course, is negligible. And at the very beginning, I'm assuming there's really not much A minus, not much weak base or conjugate weak base present um, because, again, the dissociation of the weak acid due to water is negligible at this point. So the change is what's going to look a little bit different from what you've seen before. I have to decide which of these two is the limiting reactant. So if I've, really, if I've gone past the equivalence point, that means I've added more than enough hydroxide to react with all the weak acid. Therefore, I wouldn't have any more weak acid left and my weak acid would be the limiting reactant. In this case, I am before the equivalence point. I haven't added equivalent moles of hydroxide to react with my initial moles of weak acid. Therefore, the hydroxide is my limiting reactant. There, that is what is my change in, um, in moles because the hydroxide is going to react with the weak acid to form the conjugate weak base. So I need to take my initial amount of weak acid minus my change, and that gives me my final, my, my current moles of weak acid that are left in the Erlenmeyer flask. And since this is before the equivalence point, all of the hydroxide has been used up and now I don't have any more, any more moles of hydroxide left. And all of the hydroxide has reacted with the, the weak acid to form this conjugate weak base right here. Okay, so at this point, remember that Ka, Ka is my acid dissociation equilibrium constant. And that's always going to be my conjugate weak base times hydronium ion over my weak acid concentration. So hydronium is missing to solve for Ka here, right? It's missing. Also remember that in this uh, particular format, I'm looking at concentration and, um, of each component. And in the ice table, I wrote in moles. So, so just keep that in mind. You would have to know the final concentration in order to really calculate for, for molar concentration. You'd, you'd have to know the final volume in order to calculate molar concentration. Okay, but in, in many cases, you're going to be working with a pH meter, right? You're going to have a probe. So if you have pH from a pH meter, you can solve for Ka at any point in the, in the titration. Because if you know the amount of hydroxide that you've added, then you'll know how much a conjugate base, A minus, has been produced from that, and you can plug that directly in here. You know how many moles of weak acid are left, so you can plug that in here. And um, since you have pH, you know that, write this, um, you know that pH is equal to the negative log of hydronium ion concentration, and you also know that hydronium ion concentration is equal to 10 to the negative pH. So you can plug pH directly in here, solve for the hydronium ion concentration, and then plug that into the Ka expression to solve for Ka. Now I, I want to make one uh, extra note to that. It, once you go past the equivalence point, remember, you're going to have excess hydroxide. You will no longer have any HA. All of your weak acid will have reacted to turn into its weak base. So in order to calculate the pH or pOH, you're really just looking at the, um, the excess amount of hydroxide that you've added to the solution no longer are you going to be able to really solve for Ka past the equivalence point. So anything from the first drop, well actually before the first drop of sodium hydroxide to the equivalence point, you can use those values to solve for the Ka. Okay, I note here that um, you can solve for Ka at any point, but this is easier when the molarity of HA or the moles, okay, remember they're in the same solution, the weak acid and the conjugate weak base are in the same solution. Um, so I can just as easily say when the moles of the weak acid equal the moles of the weak base, so that 
Ka. So I'm just taking my Ka expression and I'm saying that when these two are equal, this value becomes one, right? So Ka is equal to hydronium ion concentration when the moles of Ha or the molarity of Ha is equal to the moles of the molarity of A minus. Or I can take the negative log of the, both of these sides. Okay, so negative log of Ka is equal to negative log of hydronium concentration. So that means the pKa equals the pH. So what am I saying? I'm saying when the moles of weak acid equal the moles of weak base, my pKa is equal to my pH. So if I have a pH meter, then it, that value is the pKa of my weak acid. Okay, so let's continue and kind of calculate some of this. When, okay, so when in the titration does HA equal A minus? Okay, so let's look at this. As hydroxide is added, so I'm adding it into my Erlenmeyer, this is the overall reaction that's happening, right? My weak acid is reacting with my um, strong base and forming conjugate weak acid and water. Okay, so at the very beginning, let's say I just have two moles of weak acid. And at that point, I, I virtually have no weak base. Yes, some of it is going to be dissociated, but not in significant amounts. So let's say I have two moles of strong, or weak acid and zero moles of my conjugate weak base. When I add one mole of hydroxide, that reacts with one of my weak acids and creates a, the conjugate weak base, right? Because this hydroxide strips this uh, weak acid from its acidic proton and makes water and then I'm left with a minus so at that point one mole I have one mole of weak acid and one mole um, oh and I this is written incorrectly I have one mole of weak acid and one mole of the conjugate weak base right here okay so with that I can make uh, a conclusion that if I started with, and this is really what I start, this, these are the moles of um, HA started with. So I started with this amount in the example that I gave at the beginning. If I started with 2.550 times 10 to the negative 3 moles of that weak acid, half of that is going to give me the number of moles of hydroxide needed to reach half the equivalence point. So I need to add half the equivalent mole um, count that I started with in order um, for my pH to equal my pKa. Why do we care about um, half equivalence point? Why do I keep talking about half equivalence point? Because again, the pH is equal to the pK at half equivalence point. So if I have a pH meter in my solution and I've reached half equivalence point, then I am going to get the pKa of my weak acid. And in this case, I said we didn't know the Ka Therefore, we didn't know the pKa of the weak acid. So let's look at a titration curve. This is a weak acid titrated with hydroxide. So at the very beginning, when I have no volume of hydroxide added, the, my pH is pretty low. Not as low as it would be if it was a strong acid, so this might be embellished a bit just to show um, the transition of uh, pH as the hydroxide is added. But I do have a low pH, right? And as I add hydroxide, my pH should be increasing. Okay, but at a point of inflection, when I really see this steep increase in pH, that's my equivalence point. That's when the moles of hydroxide that I've added is equivalent to the moles of weak acid that I started with. So once I, once I add equivalent amounts, right after that point, the pH is changing so much because I have excess hydroxide. And hydroxide is a strong base, therefore it's drastically going to affect the pH of my solution. So at this point, the inflection point, really where I see the slope of my curve going from positive to almost a negative slope, that's where my equivalence point is. If I make a straight line down from the inflection point to my um, the x-axis, that will give me the volume of hydroxide added at the equivalence point. So I have down right here that if the equivalence point, let's just say it's 15 milliliters, let's say this point right here is 15 milliliters, that's the equivalence point volume. 
half of that would be 7.50, right? So I would go to 15, I'd say half of that is, we're just gonna say it's about right here, 7.5. I would draw a line up to the titration curve. Now if I draw a line lateral to that, if I draw that line from the titration curve over to the y-axis, that's gonna give me the pH at half equivalence point, which is the pK of the acid. So let me write this down. Right here, this is the pKa of the weak acid. Now, the, the problem at the very beginning said that I wanted to solve for the Ka or I didn't know the Ka, right? So you know that pKa is equal to negative log of the Ka or 10 to the negative pKa is going to give me the Ka. So I can take the Ka from, or I can take the pKa from here, I can plug it in right here and solve for the Ka. So that's how you'll use your tit titration curve to solve for the pKa and the Ka of an unknown weak acid.